everyone. Welcome to Green Gander 75. I'm Buddy. All right, so uh, this week has been a um, pretty busy week. We got uh, quite a bit done on the, uh, the lathe project. Um, so we've been removing uh, paint, degreasing, uh, removing rust, uh, a number of things like that. Uh, bef so before we get into that, I want to talk about something that's uh, that's really important to me, and uh, it's it's goes right along the lines of what we're doing here with the lathe and um, and the process of removing paint. So one of the things about a uh, an old machine like this is the uh, the paint that is on it uh, would typically have uh, have lead in it. It'd be lead based paint. Now my particular lathe uh, has been uh, at some point it was completely refinished, um, so I've tested it and and there's no lead paint left on my lathe. Uh, it was actually repainted with a, uh, a latex base. So, um, but anyways, we're still going to be careful because there is possibilities that there might be uh, might be some places that still have the original paint. So. Um, even though my lathe is is painted with latex paint, I'm going to treat it as though it was painted with lead. Uh, it's better to be safe, uh, you know, when dealing with old paint like that, um, just for just for safety's sake. So what I'm going to do is talk a moment about lead. Um, so lead paint, and I'm not going to go into the physical structure of lead and, and, and things like that, but I would do want to mention a couple things about uh, um, basically what lead can do to you and uh, what really what lead can do to your children. Uh, that's what really concerns me. So you want to be careful with this because I know a lot of y'all have children. Uh, so your children might be around you as you're working on your project and, and you don't want your children to get sick. So, um, all right, let's go ahead and and uh, talk a minute about the uh, about the health effects. Now, you're going to see me looking over here. Over to the side here is my computer, and it is basically um, kind of like a teleprompter. I don't usually use it. I usually just talk to you direct, like I am right now. Um, it's just easier for me to do that. Uh, I don't read very good, so uh, well, I read, I read fine. I just don't read very good out loud, so uh, it, it would be kind of choppy and wouldn't sound very good. But um, you will see me looking over here because uh, I do have my notes here on the screen. Okay, so uh, lead-based paint is uh, especially dangerous to um, children under the age of six and also to women of childbearing age and to a developing fetus. Now, uh, before I go any farther, I do want to mention that all this information that I got is uh, readily available through the United States uh, Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA. Um, so you can just do a Google search for uh, EPA uh, lead and you'll be able to get this information. I will also include down at the bottom a link uh, to one of their pamphlets, which I think is really informative. Um, not only for a project like this, but maybe uh, maybe just some information for you to be aware of, because uh, lead-based uh, paints are also found around your house. They can be in your plumbing. They can be anywhere, and um, it really, really can uh, really can cause a lot of problems. And I'll tell you a story about that here in just a minute. Okay, so starting over again here. So uh, lead-based paint, of course, is dangerous, uh, especially to children under the age of six uh, and women of childbearing age, uh, as it is a dangerous to a developing fetus. So lead-based paint, uh, the health effects for a uh, for a child uh, can include uh, nervous system and kidney damage, learning disabilities speech, language, and behavior problems, coordination problems, bone and muscle growth problems, and hearing damage. So that's in a child. Uh, some, just a, basically a summary of all the things that, uh, that lead can cause and, and, and create difficulties with. So uh, in adults, and um, 
I'll tell you a story in a minute about about the adults with lead based paint. Okay, so adults, um, of course, they can cause harm to a uh, developing uh, fetus and a um, for a woman of childbearing age. Uh, fertility problems, both in men and women. Digestive problems, nerve problems, memory and concentration problems, and muscle and joint pain. So that's just a few of the uh, few of the problems that lead uh, can cause. And um, now, I've had an opportunity to uh, to see the effects of lead on on um, somebody uh, up and up up close and, and see what happened uh, as a result of lead. Now, when I first started working uh, where I work, I, I was a housekeeper. As a housekeeper, I worked on the floor crew, um, you know, putting wax down, polishing floors, and, and things like that. So one of the guys on our floor crew, uh, elderly gentleman, well, not too old, but uh, probably in his late 50s, into his 60s. Now, when I first started working here, he, uh, you know, he was pretty normal, just an average guy. But as we worked with him, uh, we started to notice that he began to slow down. He would start to have, uh, he started to have all these memory issues. He would forget things. Uh, he really just, he, man, you could tell there was something wrong with this guy. There was something that was just really, really off. So what happened was, and as, as part of where I work, we have to go through training uh, regarding lead and also asbestos. Um, we'd go through this training yearly um, to make sure we know what, what, what's going on because we do encounter both of those items here where I work. So this guy, he was, man, he was not, something was definitely wrong. And so he'd been to the doctors and over and over and over and over again and they really just couldn't figure out why he was having the problems he was having. I mean, they were going into some crazy stuff, and they were testing him for things, things like Parkinson's and and all kinds of stuff. So, but nothing came back, you know, that he, you know, this was what was going on. Well, he went to this class, and uh, this is when they were really getting going with these classes every year here at work, uh, where they hadn't been before. So he was going to this class, and one of the things that the instructor mentioned was um, lead fishing weights. Now lead uh, can enter your body through dust, uh, vapors, um, direct entry, uh, eating chips, biting down on the lead anchors, things like that. So what the instructor said was uh, one of the con common ways that um, that people have gotten sick with lead was making lead fishing weights. Well, what it turned out was was this guy who I worked with. That was his hobby was making lead fishing weights. So, <laughs> right after that class, he got with the instructor and said, "Hey." I make these lead fishing weights. And the stuff that you mentioned as far as the health effects that lead in, you know, that lead causes on a body, um, man, that just kind of describes me completely. Well, he ended up going to a doctor and they did the blood tests and everything for lead and found out that his concentration of lead was absolutely through the roof. Wow, I mean, just like that, they had an answer of what, for why he was having the problems he was having. And basically, the guy was going crazy. It was usually just losing his mind completely. So, they used a, uh, a process of, um, it was like, vitamins, high doses of vitamins to, uh, to remove the lead from his body. And um, within... A matter of months, this guy, he started acting like himself, and uh, a lot of the problems that he was having uh, basically just completely vanished. So the problem boiled down to was this guy 
had been exposed to lead and it made him sick. It made him very sick. Now, I don't have any way to say, okay, yeah, um, what happened next is result of the lead or not. You know, I'm not a doctor. I can't say for sure. But it wasn't too long after that. Within six to eight months, this guy, um, he had a massive stroke here at work. And when he had that stroke, uh, basically it incapacitated him uh, for the rest of his life and uh, he didn't live you know very much longer after that so you know I'm not a doctor I can't say okay the lead caused a stroke but I'm sure I, I, I can't believe that it helped things because this guy was really really sick and yeah the the vitamin process to get the lead out of his body he improved uh, pretty rapidly but um, you know, it makes me wonder if the damage wasn't already done. You know, because he had been doing that for a very, very long time. So yeah, I mean, lead. You know, you can... Sometimes it, it affects some people and sometimes it doesn't. You take, for, for instance, my father. Now, he worked as a cable splicer and he was around lead uh, through his entire career and he's had the blood tests he had to have the blood tests on a, on a regular basis and everything and he was uh he basically came clean you know no no lead issues at all so you take a gentleman like my father who had no problems he's just fine and then you take a guy like here at work he uh he just made lead fishing weights and um Gosh, I mean, it, it might as well have just done them in. So, okay. You know, it's kind of like, you know, I might get sick, I might not get sick. But okay, let's play it safe. Let's not take any chances. The way to, to uh, reduce your chances of getting lead are really simple. So let's just, let's just play it safe and treat paint that you're removing, unless you know that you just put that paint on and it is absolutely lead free let's go ahead and treat it as though it's hot with lead so getting back with the lathe the lathe is tested clean um, the, the parts that I've tested you can get a test kit at your local hardware store for lead very simple no problem um, I think it costs like 10 bucks for the for the kit so you can test your uh, you can test your machine to see if it's got lead, and I would highly encourage you to do that. So, removing paint with lead. All right. Well, I'm not going to go into details on how to do it because uh, I live in the United States. I live here in Florida. So, what I do here in the United States may be completely different than what you would do in another country with your local regulations. So my recommendation to you is, okay, go ahead and check with your local government, find out their recommendations on how to deal with, uh, with a product like lead paint. That way you know what to do, you know how to handle it, um, you're being safe with it. So what you're going to see me doing, and I'm not going to explain how I dispose of it and all that, because like I said, it varies from place to place. But what you're going to see me doing in a few of these clips that I'm going to be showing here in just a moment, is you will see that I will wet the part uh, before scraping it. Basically, the rule of thumb is if you have, uh, if you have lead face paint, the dust is what causes the most problems. So if you keep the product that you're working with, the item that you're working with wet, then you should be good. You shouldn't have any issues. The, uh, the keeping it wet basically keeps down the dust. Now what I've also done is I've also controlled the area that I am, um, the, the chips and everything else that I'm scraping off they're going into a dedicated sheet of visqueen that is down on the table where I'm working. So everything goes on that. When I'm done with that, I fold that up. I discard it according to my local regulations. It's just as simple as that. Keep the product wet. 
Keep all your chips in one place, fold them up real good, discard them according to local regulations. And that's it. So, <laughs> well, that, uh, that took a little bit, but I'm glad to, uh, glad to go ahead and tell you all a little bit of my thoughts on that. So, uh, real quickly here, um, we're going to go through a couple of things that I did this, uh, this past week. And um, I'm not going to bore you to death with the stuff that I did because, quite frankly, most of it was just hours and hours of just sitting there and removing paint. And that's basically it. <laughs> so that could get uh, that can get pretty dull after a little bit. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna show you some uh, some short clips on on what I did. Um, Removing the paint, I might uh, might do a little voiceover because when I was doing this, I did not, um, I didn't really say very much. It was just kind of just focus and uh, get the paint removed and then move on to the next part. Uh, basically, I just set the camera up and, and forgot it was there. Which, <laughs> if you've ever done paint removal, that's basically what you will do too, I think. Because... You can only explain removing paint so much. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it's. Yeah, I think it's almost worse than watching paint dry. But uh, so yeah, it's, it's probably the most difficult part of the entire project. Uh, the most boring, dull, nasty, nasty, nasty job. But uh, the end result is definitely worth it. All right, so we're going to run through a couple of those clips. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is is uh, show you real quick uh, taking apart the um, the clutch assembly in the apron. Uh, a couple of clips on that, and um, once we're done with that, then I'm going to show a few clips of uh, removing the uh, removing the paint uh, on some of these parts, and then um, and then we'll join back here. Okay, so we've got the apron here, and uh, what we're going to go ahead and do with it is spray it down with uh, some oven cleaner. That will help break away any of the uh, grease that's on it, uh, or grease and oil, and it will also uh, help remove any old South Bend paint that may still be left on the, uh, on the casting. So we're going to go ahead and spray it down pretty good here, uh, real thick, and then we'll let it sit for several hours, and then come back and rinse it. Okay, so the apron has been sitting for uh, about four hours now. So what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, wash it off real good with a water hose. And make sure we get all that off of there. And um, be sure to dispose of that water according to your, uh, your local regulations. Because it, it could be hazardous with lead and, of course, the chemicals that you just washed off. Now we're going to go ahead and start removing the paint on uh, some of the smaller parts. So first off I'm going to put on my chemical resistant gloves and then I'm going to be using citrus strip uh, to remove the paint. The, um, my lathe has been painted with latex paint um, therefore I'm using citrus strip which does a pretty good job breaking down latex paint pretty hot outside so I'm going to uh, wrap everything up with um, a saran wrap um, stretch wrap that you see there uh, to try to keep it from uh, evaporating too quick so the uh, it'll give time for the stripper to work and then uh, it'll still be somewhat wet by the time I uh, take 
take this apart and get ready to, uh, to start taking the paint off the next day. A um, lot of really small parts, um, small areas to try to get, make sure I get all that uh, stripper into. And then uh, once I'm pretty comfortable with what I see, I go ahead and, and wrap it up real good. Um, trying to make sure I've got no air gaps for uh, the, that the, uh, the stripper could uh, evaporate. It's the next day, so it's time to go ahead and start removing the paint the paint stripper. So first off we're going to go ahead and uh, wet it down with some water. Then we're going to use a combination of uh, scraper, some wire brushes, uh, nylon brushes, and a brass brush to uh, get in there and start removing the paint. It's a slow process. Uh, the only thing you can do is just, uh, just stick with it and uh, keep at it and the paint will come off. So, uh, okay, we're gonna go ahead and speed this video up here so uh, y'all enjoy. Okay, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed watching that. So, I uh, hope you also didn't get a little, didn't get bored watching that because it's, um, like I said, I mean, it's, it's, it's fun to do, uh, do things like that, but um, there's a lot to it, and it's, I mean, it's not exciting, but you know, the end result is definitely worth it. Um, so, this will be. Uh, probably the first part of, of two update style uh, uh, videos that I'm going to be putting out over the next couple weeks um, because I'm only about halfway done uh, removing the paint on the apron um, and then and then of course repainting it and then we'll get back into our regular um, you know almost hands-on over my shoulder see what I'm doing kind of videos when I want to get ready to put it back together so, uh, I would like to thank you for watching. Uh, I want to thank you for listening to me uh, as I spoke a little bit about the lead and uh, shared a little story about, uh, about my experiences with it. And um, I'd like to also thank you for, uh, for my subscribers. I'd like to encourage you, if you haven't subscribed, uh, go ahead and click that subscribe button uh, so you can keep up to date on my videos and... Uh, and um, get to see everything new coming out and everything. So we're, I really enjoy, uh, enjoy watching that subscribe uh, count go up. That's wonderful. And uh, of course, I like to thank all my regular subscribers for watching and, and everything. And uh, give me a good thumbs up. Give me some encouraging words in the comments. Uh, I really enjoy that. Um, it is definitely an encouragement uh, to see that as, as I uh, work to put out these videos. And, and all for you for your enjoyment and everything well I guess that's it so uh, once again like thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you next time y'all have a good evening